heard this real loud wind and rain. We couldn't see anything else but hear the wind. And then all of a sudden there was a big crashing sound and this old barn that uh, was next door all fell on top of our house. And that, it didn't, it didn't sound like anything had fallen in our house, but that's what it was. When we looked outside, it was all over the top of the roof and front yard, backyard. Our cars are damaged and everything. Do you think it was a tornado? It must have been. It sounded like a train roaring through. It couldn't have been anything else. I can't think of anything else that would have done this much damage and pick up that big building and land it on top of our house. I don't think anything else could do that. Probably only school integration and school busing have polarized more parents than fluoridation. When Dallas started putting fluoride in its water nearly four years ago, it caused quite a splash here in town, with opponents saying it was forced medication and proponents claiming clear medical advantages. Surprisingly, today the issue still has not been settled for sure. Officials do not know to this day whether fluoridation does any good. In order to know for sure, a survey was needed at the time fluoride was first added, and no such survey has been taken. But according to City Dental Health Director Dr. Lloyd Richards, such a survey would still do some good. The problem is that if we are to show the, let's say, the percent of reduction in tooth decay in children, then we would have to have a baseline uh, to determine the number of decayed teeth per child. Is there any benefit from having this statistical information since there is all the other information available? Yes, I think so, because most every community wants to know uh, the benefits that their own children are receiving, and this is what this would show in Dallas if we did a survey of this type. Although Dallas has no statistical proof that fluoridation helps teeth, some dentists are apparently convinced. Such a man is Dr. Stuart Wallace, who during his practice in Dallas has seen a definite improvement. The three and four year old child that we see now has a very minor decay problem, if any. And more than likely, most of the percentage of them, there's, there's just no decay problem at all. Can you lay most of this improvement to fluoride? <clears throat> I really can't put it any place else with possibly the exception that we dentists are now more accepting our responsibility as uh, educating our own public or the, trying to raise the, the uh, dental IQ of the public. But despite what seems to be a mass of information in favor of fluoridation, it's not a drop in the bucket when faced with the political question of compulsory medication. Nationally known commentator Dan Smoot explains his position on the matter. I do not think that government at any level has the right to force medication upon people against their will. And that is precisely what they're doing in fluoridation. They force the total population to consume fluoridated water under the presumption that consuming fluoridated water will help a t tiny minority of the citizens, namely children under 10 years old. No responsible medical uh, person whose statements that I have read even alleges that drinking fluoridated water will help adults or anybody over about 10 years old. Fluoridation of drinking water began almost exactly 25 years ago in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and has since flooded the country. Now there are only some 10,000 dry communities, that is, towns that don't put fluoride in their drinking water. Yet the debate goes on, and it may never be settled. This is Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News.
Well, there are 100 million people against 2 million Israelis. Eventually, it seems to me, the Arabs will be able to mount uh, an attack that will push Israel into the sea. At the present moment, the combined Arab air forces have 850 planes against Israel's 155. The only thing that's kept Israel alive is that the Israeli people, the Jewish people, have been extremely brave and very united and highly skilled in their self-defense, and the Arab leaders have been unable to generate the same kind of uh, patriotism among their people, largely because they don't take care of their people and let them live in misery. But one day they could possibly have a young group of Arabs, like these guerrillas who are rising now, who will fight better. And Israel has no guarantee that she will survive unless great powers guarantee her existence. Uh, by great powers, you mean the United States? Well, yes. We are the principal power upon whom the Israelis uh, can depend. But also, in a negative way, I mean the Soviet Union. If the Soviet Union would stop supplying arms and encouragement to NASA for his mad designs, then NASA would have to stop. And we are going to have to persuade the Soviet Union to stop fomenting war in the Middle East. But we're not in a good position to do that until we stop fomenting war ourselves in Southeast Asia. Until America gets out of Vietnam, it's very difficult for us to treat in a rational way with such a problem as the Middle East.